The woman didn't care about the measles until her boyfriend was shocked to find he had a large red spot on his waist. Her boyfriend's condition took a turn for the worse during the night. He was coughing all the time. Just half a day, the red spots on his waist turned into rotting flesh. A terrible virus that is about to sweep the human race is spreading through the couple. But Jess, unaware of this, continues to pin her hopes on the paramedics. She's holding her boyfriend Lan's hand, hoping that Lon would be able to get to the hospital as soon as possible. Jess never expected the ambulance was parked in a big, dark warehouse. No one showed up while they were wondering. Two men in protective suits burst in. Jess was hooded and forced out. She was locked in a small house. The staff only gave her simple food every day. No matter how much Jess cried out, no one would tell her what was going on, and that fragile hope was shattered. Jess decided to escape on her own. She broke the chandelier on the ceiling. The staff didn't see Jess. He sent a message to headquarters. They could detect signs of life in the house. The staff slowly opened the door and went in to check. Jess was hiding in the corner. She took the opportunity to slip out. The staff reacted in time to chase after her. Jess stabbed him in the neck with the remaining bulb. She passed by the room where Lon was being held while she was escaping. And the scary thing is, Lon was covered in barnacle-like bubbles. He begged Jess to get him out. But the door had a combination lock that wouldn't open. The building's alarm had been raised. Jess had to flee without her boyfriend. When she got home and got some change to pack her bags, Jess accidentally found her boyfriend's proposal ring. But now is not the time to lament. Because soon she heard footsteps outside her door. Two gunmen were coming after her. Jess had to abandon her packing and run out the window. She hid in a pickup truck. Jess didn't know where it was headed. But she knew it would help her get away from her pursuers as quickly as possible. Meanwhile, the police have set up a secret task force inside the warehouse. They're tracking Jess online. Early the next morning, the car stopped at a petrol station. Jess took a quick peek. Till the driver went into the toilet. She dared to climb out of the car. Jess took a packet of biscuits and a map from the car. She then decided to walk into the nearby forest. Jess knew that if she stayed in this country, she would be taken back. She decided to flee north to a neighboring country. At night, Jess arrived at a farm. There was no one in the hayloft. She rested there for the night. At the same time, the task force had already found her through the CCTV. But Jess got off the bus and went into the forest. The task force can't find out her current location. Jess came out of the hut the next morning. Seeing no one around, she snuck into the house to steal canned goods. Reed, the farmer, caught her in the act. Jess had to put the cans back and apologized to Reed. Reed saw that she was hurt and invited her to stay for breakfast. Jess gobbled it up. She didn't even need a knife or fork. The hostess, Janie, laughed at this scene. Janie asked Jess if she was living on the streets. Jess explained that she just wanted to travel north. Wherever she goes, no destination. They knew that this child must be in a difficult situation, so they didn't ask any more questions. Afterwards, Jess went to the toilet to wash herself. But in the meantime, Reed ate Jess's leftover bacon. It was this act that brought about the couple's downfall. Jess washed up and said she had to get out of there. Janie said Reed's waiting outside. He'll take you as far north as he can. Jess wanted to say no, but Janie was too enthusiastic. And she really needed to leave as soon as possible. So Jess got in Reed's car. The car drove all the way to the edge of the northernmost forest. Jess asked to part right here. She got out of the car. Reed was kind enough to remind her that there was a duffel bag in the trunk for her. It was really nice of the old couple. Unfortunately, kindness doesn't change the horrible outcome. They're facing an irreversible viral infection. The camera was drawn to Elsa, a hunter on the task force. Elsa has a rare form of acromegaly. Her body is showing signs of being out of control. However, Elsa's stubbornness does not want to report this to her superiors. And she doesn't want to tell her family. Elsa wanted to live alone until the end of her life. And her superiors hid the truth. They gave Elsa a mission to hunt down an Ebola patient. Soon the cyber team found out that the old couple had helped Jess. They sent Elsa to investigate immediately. Elsa didn't want to go out with a cane, but in order to improve her chasing rate, she took her crutches with her. When she arrived at the farm, Elsa changed into a yellow suit. She limped into the house with her crutches, and there was no sign of the old couple. All she saw was a pool of blood on the sink. Suddenly, she saw Janie hunched over in the yard. Elsa shouted and followed the footprints. She never expected. What she saw next was so horrible. Elsa saw Janie kneeling on the ground and twitching, and her face seemed to have lost a piece of itself. Suddenly, she stood up, shouting and approaching Elsa step by step. Elsa was about to draw her gun. Reed came out of nowhere. The gun fell to the ground. Elsa pushed Reed away as hard as she could. Then she quickly picked up her gun and fired back. Before she could react, Janie jumped on her again. Elsa is a veteran sheriff. She was able to fight back in time, even when she was physically unable to do so. She finally realized it wasn't an Ebola patient. It's a carrier of an unknown virus. Elsa asked her superiors what she was being sent to do. Only then did they tell her the truth. It turns out it's a virus that's been cultivated by a pharmaceutical company for a certain drug. During the experiment, one of the researchers got infected. The researcher was arrested. But his dog got out. 
Jess and Lon came into contact with the dog while camping. That's how the virus got out. It turns out Elsa was working for a heartless pharmaceutical company. Feeling teased, Elsa said she was done. She said she was sick and had to leave the operation. Her superiors knew she was sick all along. They only sent her because she was dying. And although Elsa said she was quitting, her body was honest. She went on with the mission. Because the truth is out there. Jess may have the antibody factor. Bringing Jess back will not only prevent a catastrophe. It could help those who are already infected. On the other hand, Jess walks into a bar and asks the owner if he was hiring. The bar wasn't short on staff. But the owner, Molly, is a storyteller. She thought that Jess might be experiencing the same difficulties as she did when she was young. So she took Jess in as a temporary worker. After work, Molly took the initiative to talk to Jess about her problems. The bad thing is, they used the same cup. That tragedy would strike Molly again. Molly took Jess home, that she could stay here for a few days, so that Jess could save up enough money to leave. Next morning, Jess knocked on the door and asked Molly what she wanted to eat. She was going out to get breakfast. Molly didn't respond. Jess thought she hadn't woken up yet. But what she didn't realize was that Molly was having a seizure. She called out hysterically to Jess, but all she could get out was a very faint sound. Jess was walking back with her breakfast, and she happened to pass by a pet shop and saw a cat. Jess combined her symptoms. She noticed that it seemed to be the infection from the border sheep that day. At that moment, Elsa, who had tracked the cat to the town, happened to pass by and saw Jess. She puts on her gloves and prepares to chase the cat. The keen Jess noticed it immediately. She turned around and walked away. The situation was so urgent that Elsa didn't even bother to put on her protective suit and mask. She went straight after her, but limping Elsa could not catch up with Jess. She pulled out a gun and shouted. Jess was so scared that she ran away, and she wanted to go after her. Her left leg suddenly lost its strength and she fell down. By the time she got up and chased after her, Jess had already disappeared. She ran back to say goodbye to Molly. There was no answer. Jess opened the door. She didn't realize that Molly had become just like her boyfriend. She was so shocked. Jess always thought it was just her and her boyfriend. She never thought it would involve anyone else. She was crying and packing, and then suddenly the boards creaked upstairs. She went to Molly's door again. There was no movement inside. Molly burst out. She didn't jump on Jess first. Molly seemed to have a faint shred of sanity left, but it soon disappeared. Jess had the reflexes to survive. Suddenly, she realized why they'd locked her up. And what was even more frightening, Jess found herself suffering the same symptoms. Her hair was falling out by the handful. Soon Elsa arrived, she saw Molly lying on the floor through the window. It's not far from the neighboring country. Elsa deduced that Jess had fled towards the border. She donned her suit again and gave chase. Elsa eventually found Jess in a warehouse. But to her surprise, Jess didn't have any antibodies. She just had a longer incubation period than the others. Jess had lost all her hair. She had an abscess on her face. Elsa tried to calm Jess down and urged her to come back with her. Jess said she didn't want to go anywhere. Jess ignored Elsa's warnings, so Elsa had to shoot to save her life. Jess was desperate again. She thought Elsa was trying to help her. She didn't expect to get shot. Jess immediately turned around and ran out of the border. At this time, Elsa's hood was filled with fog. She couldn't name it Jess. Elsa had to take off her hood. She used her left hand to support her shaking right hand. And then she fired. Jess struggled for a moment to get to her feet. But by then, Elsa had caught up with her. She said she needed Jess's blood for her research. Whether dead or alive, Elsa is always with Jess. Jess said she never wanted to hurt anyone. She didn't want to go back. She doesn't want to go back to that little house in the dark. Elsa said, don't you understand? Old couple and Molly are dead because of you. And so is your boyfriend. When she heard that, Jess screamed hysterically. She said she just wanted to see more of the world. It hit Elsa right in the gut. In a way, they're both in the same boat. As terminally ill people, Elsa's thoughts were the same. She wanted to see more of the world. Unfortunately, Jess still doesn't understand Elsa's intentions. She had no choice. Elsa had to pull the trigger. Now that it's over, she's not afraid of anything anymore. He understood Jess's fear and why she wanted to run. Elsa reached out and held Jess's hand and gave her one last moment of warmth in this world. The camera is moving fast. Oversight destroyed all information about the incident. And at the end of the story, Elsa was not infected during the operation. And after this incident, Elsa is actively cooperating with the treatment. But the tragedy didn't seem to end there. When the physiotherapist came to the house to discuss the treatment plan, suddenly and without warning, he started coughing. Although the therapist said he was fine, but Elsa seemed to realize something. 